Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome. Uh, this is another developer-centric uh, talk. So Gus, our VP of engineering, talked about um, application architecture in general. And then Marius earlier spoke about the developers portal. And what I'm going to talk about today uh, builds on both of those things. So for the hackathon, we built a method of to uh, device to device or machine to machine communication um, with the goal of or like a hypothetical use case of you've got um, tons of IoT devices and you are pulling data from them and you want to write data to a number of hats or a number of PDAs. Sorry, hats, the old name. A number of PDAs or vice versa. You've got a number of PDAs that you want to pull their IoT data from um, at sort of a high frequency. So we've got a machine to machine authentication system. Um, if developers out there are uh, familiar with OAuth 2, it is, it is akin to OAuth 2, although they don't have the exact same use case we do. So it should remind you of OAuth 2, but is not a, an OAuth 2 implementation. Anyway, so since Marius has already talked about the developers portal, uh, I'm going to assume just for brevity that um, you've got an account or you know how to make an account. Um, for this hack from home, we added a specific hack from home menu item. And then we added a way to easily create a device. So a device is a type of our application which enables this um, shared authentication system. So uh, as I was building this presentation, I created a number of devices, but we'll create a new device. And when we create a new device, we get three things. So we, to make things simple, we automatically generate your device ID, which is also referred to as your application ID. We automatically create your namespace, which when we spoke about, uh, we talked about, um, when Marius talked about the namespace, uh, he sort of described as the name of the folder within the PDA where your data is gonna live. So this namespace is a shared namespace. So both the owner of the PDA and the device and the application that uses the device can read and write data to this namespace. And finally, we have an app secret. Now the app secret is akin to if you're used to AWS or a number of other platform systems where they give you this uh, one time secret that allows you to trade that secret for some other information. And what we're going to do in this case is we're going to trade this application secret for a device access token and a device refresh token. The refresh token you can ignore for this point in time because to make the hack from home significantly simpler, we extended the expiry time of the access token to be four days. It's normally an hour, industry standard is typically an hour, but because this is a one-off hack from home scenario, we've extended the um, expiry time to go past the entire weekend. So there's no, uh, if you get to the point where you're building an application with device authentication, you for this hack from home, you won't have to worry about any of the refresh logic. You can just use the access token. Anyway, the point is you get these three bits of information um, and you use them to talk to PDAs. On the left-hand side of my screen, I've got Postman and I am going to update a number of these uh, items um, to make it easier. So we will update the namespace. We'll up oops, the device application, device ID, we'll update the uh, namespace and we'll update the app secret in this case. Get rid of that bad boy. And we are going to reset all these things and then we're going to save, otherwise, it's going to complain. So we've got a scenario set up where I've got my hat username. Uh, sorry, my uh, PDA username, which is a uh, sandbox PDA. Um, you've, I've got my password here. Uh, it's a great password. Um, the namespace of the device we just created, the device ID. Um, this is the URL just to make things a little bit easier in Postman. 
And these items that are not filled in, we're going to fill in when we actually execute some of these uh, API calls. And finally, we've got the app secret. So we're going to uh, close that bad boy, get him out of here. Um, the dedicated, get that out of here. So the first thing we need to do is we need to tell the PDA that um, we have we want to enable the device on that PDA. So how you can do that is first by getting your access token. Um, and sorry, let me pause for one second. This is all outlined in the uh, docs that we created for Hack From Home. So there are a number of steps, including creating your developer account and creating your device. What I'm about to show you, which is connecting your PDA to a device. And then the third step is how you use that access token to read and write. So um, if you read, if you learn better from reading, then it's all right here. So just head to docs.dataswift.io and then click on the hack from home um, uh, header. So we've got the scenario now where we, we know our um, PDA address. And what we want to do is we want to enable the device on that PDA. So first things first, we need an access token. Well, why don't we follow along? That's probably a good idea. We can follow along. So the first thing we need to do is we need to get our access token. So we do that by sending an API request with our username and password um, as headers. And we get this access token back, which is an access token on behalf of the user. So I have a little bit of code here that pulls out this access token and sticks it in a um, in an environment variable. So when I want to add the device to the PDA, and I can check to see if I've got the right um, I can check to see if I've got the right device. It ends with a QW. This one ends in QW, which is great. So now I've used my uh, user token. Um, to say, hey, I want to add this to uh, this device to my PDA. Send that along. And down at the bottom, we're like, OK, setup is true, enables true, active is true. That's great. That's what we care about. Behind the scenes, we have an authentication service that manages the membership to each one of our devices. Um, what we talk about in the documentation is your uh, your key ring, um, which is down here. So your key ring is the is what you get when you trade your application secret for an access token. So my application secret is the one that we just created uh, in the dev portal, and when I send it, you can see that I get an access token a refresh token, which you can ignore for this time period, and then all of the associated PDAs or associated hats with this device. Since it's just me, it's just this, uh, this hat address. So now that we've got an access token, we can write data to the PDA in the namespace that, um, that is defined in the device, which is that, in this case, it ends with DEG. So I've got the access token, from the key ring, I've got my PDA URL, and I've got my namespace, and I've got um, some uh, J a JSON body that we want to write. In this case, uh, the brand is Fender, the model is Stratocaster, because I'm writing to the uh, guitar's endpoint within the device namespace. So if we send that along, what we get back is exactly what we'd expect. We've got the body of the the um, the body that we care about. We've got a unique record ID, and then we've got a, a namespace plus an endpoint um, uh, name. So we've, our full endpoint, our fully qualified endpoint is a namespace plus the name I wrote guitars. Great, writing data, totally reasonable. To read data, it's the same way. Uh, we post it, we run a get on that same endpoint. We use our access token. And what we get back is exactly what you expect it to be. The data, the endpoint, and the specific record ID. If you would like to update that specific data, um, you run, you send a put. And what you do is a really simple way is the data that was just sent to you, 
copy that um, and copy that into the body that you're going to overwrite. So let's say I don't like Stratocasters. I like Telecasters. So now I'm updating this data. Um, I'm referencing it using this record ID. Uh, it's got the same endpoint as you expect. Send this along. Um, oh, one mistake there. Did I not update? Oh, I didn't update that. Uh, body. Paste that in. Just say telly and send. Okay, so, so I did something wrong there. Um, so now we've got, uh, I've updated that data. And if we want to prove that it's been updated, uh, we can go and get that again. So previously it was Stratocaster, and now it's a telly, which is short term for Telecaster. And that's how you use your app secret to trade for an access token to then access PDA data within the namespace de uh, defined in your device. So I think that uh, wraps up the demonstration. As I said, the documentation outlines all of those things that we need to do. Um, so you can reference that. We've got examples of uh, the format um and all the information that you need so if you as i said if uh, it's better for you to read things rather than watch videos then you can go and check out those docs uh, i think that wraps it up so if there are any questions i'm happy to field them uh, can i check for questions thanks so much ty um yeah if you go down there's a q a tab um no questions so far okay great but also, if you have any questions for the developers or tie in um, specific, there is the Dev Talk channel that you can yep. also always use. Yep. Exactly. Don't distract me too much because I'm also running a project and I want to make sure that we win. <laughs> All right. I think then. That, was, that, that should be deemed a joke. Please feel free to <laughs> ask questions if you wish. <laughs> I'm not sure it was a joke. I think it was like a half half thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, it would be, be great. <laughs> there will be other developers as well from Data Surf too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody can answer the questions that you uh, that you happen to ask. So if you get to the point tomorrow or later on today where you're building stuff and you run into a problem, we're uh, we're happy to help you. Cool. Well, thank you so much, Ty. All right. And thanks very much. Hacking. <laughs> okay. All right. Bye.